Lights, camera, action. When a script is written that is so bad, no one will film it. These brave podcasters will bring it to life just so they can mock it. This is Table Reads. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Table Reads with Sean McBee, Jeff Lewis, and Joshua Baker. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Table Reads, where three generic white guys read generic white scripts about generic white people. Not always. You're generic. Written by generic white people. I have a character arc. (laughs) I'm developing. That's it. I'm in the middle of my arc right now. If you rewind to the first one I'm on, there there is lore. I'm, I'm, I'm making that full transition oh, no. into a good podcaster from a guy y'all had to yell about to speak into the mic. Well, you know, we all learn as we go. We grow. I don't grow. I stopped growing when I was like 14 or something. Oh, poor guy. I refuse to get any better at anything. <laughs> See, this is him standing on a box, too. I peeped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm on the other side, so they, they don't know yeah. that. I just stay here and they come in. I could be a puppet for all they know. <laughs> How come Sean doesn't have any legs? I just watched the Muppets again for the first time in like 25 years. Well, any Muppets? No, no, the original Muppet movie. Like, mm. Oh, it's on Disney Plus. Yeah, right? yeah, because after we ran out of Mandalorian to watch, uh, yeah, she spun I up. canceled my Disney Plus subscription. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's like, you ever seen the Muppets? And I'm like, I don't remember. And we started watching. I'm like, holy shit, this is like an acid trip. Like, it was pretty crazy. I want to watch the, the Treasure Island one again. That, that one was my favorite one when I was a kid. Yeah. Oh, I wonder if that one still... They had a, a Tim Curry as Blackbeard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Muppet Treasure Island was, was my favorite. I wonder if it's still good, though. Like, it was good when yeah, I was a kid. It's still, yeah, yeah. It's still totally still dead good. Tom's dead. <laughs> Long shot shot him. But Dead Tom's always been dead. That's why we call him Dead Tom. And then he just drops the skeleton. It's so great. I'm going to go with yes, it's still good. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to watch that again. So, anyway, we're doing Lord of the Rings, guys. Previously on Table Reads. <laughs> So, the hobbits make their way to Rivendell for reasons we're never really made to understand. Which, turns out, that's because Borman has a big musical number in Rivendell set up to give us all the backstory we needed through interpretive dance. Then, the Fellowship of the Ring sets out on their quest to destroy the One Ring with a bunch of flashbacks to shit they didn't bother to show us in Rivendell that apparently happened. Which is what's still happening. Fade in. And some music. The Fellowship trudges along a pass between two hills. Merry and Pippin are sneaking bites of the delectable Lembus, making sure they are not observed. Their faces are absorbed, expressions ecstatic. You're merry, I think, Josh. I am, I am very merry. Leek soup. Honey cake. Bread and butter pudding. Bubble and squeak. Oh, oh was I merry? Goat cheese. Cherry pie. Uh, when we left off, they had just explained that Lembus tastes like whatever... They think about. Yeah. Oh, it's imaginary. Like the food. In Any the food you think of while you're eating it. Yeah, so you gotta be careful. That's, that's what it'll taste like. Yeah, yeah. be like dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. yeah. It's it's really funny. Whatever you complain about, like you gotta hide it, right? You're, like tasting it, and you're like, oh, it tastes like cherry pie. And they're like, do you hate it? It's like, no, it really tastes like ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> but they just know you have eight. It tastes like Frodo's dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you gotta just pretend you like it. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf sees what they are up to and frowns. He comes up behind and hisses in their ears. Cod liver oil! Merry and Pippin choke on the Lembus. Pleasure turning to... See? Exactly what we were just talking about. We should just read the script. Oh, goodness. Pleasure turning to pain. 
They look up guiltily at Gandalf. Beware, foolish halflings. Remember this. All magic is good and bad and always dangerous. Another camp. Like your mom. Got her. A dim fire of dying embers. All are asleep, but a few paces off, Boromir and Aragorn converse earnestly in a low voice in low voices. Frodo awakes and strains to catch their words. You, uh, you're Boromir. I was Boromir. You're Aragorn. I'm Aragorn. Which one's Boromir's the dwarf, right? No, well, Boromir, Boromir is... is Sean Bean. Holy shit, Jeff. Fuck! <laughs> Remember, <laughs> you're the one that died. You always no, die, so you're Sean Bean. Aragorn, give it to me. <laughs> Let me take it to Minas Tirith and reforge it. For the great sword of Elendil would be a scourge to the enemy and give hope to our people. I cannot give it except to the rightful king. For it is written that when the king returns to Minas Tirith, he shall be known by many signs and will reforge the sword that was broken. Then let the force of arms decide. Hold on. I, I cannot give it to anyone except to the rightful king. Well, which, he just, which is me. He just I guess he doesn't know yet. He there's does gonna, know. No, there's going to be another interpretive dance scene. It's, they said it at the at the big meeting with the dancing. Yeah, that's true. They did. <laughs> so as part, of what, this is a actually prime moment to point out my character art. So at the beginning of this, I pointed out that, that the reason I couldn't get into Lord of the Rings is all the names sound the same. And then I just it just happened. <laughs> Earnestly, I'm like, who the fuck is Boromir? Well, wait <laughs> Which one is he? Is he the dwarf? Wait until Faramir shows See, up. I love, I love that you don't know who Boromir is. <laughs> and I've been him for three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck is this who am I? That's why his, that's why I made his fucking This is Ned Stark. See, if it was Ned, if he was named fucking Ned, I'd be like, oh I'm Ned. Well, but it's just, all this shit looks like. Well yeah, the same. you probably grew up with like eight Neds. That's true. That's a roll tide. Roll tide. <laughs> oh yeah. He snatches one half of the sword from Aragorn's belt, and Aragorn angrily draws the other. Ugh. They match up to each other. And at the first clash, there is a flash of light. They stop, momentarily blinded. Arwen appears behind them. She holds out her hands, touching their foreheads. They bend their knees and bow their swords in homage to her. Peace. The quest must not... Why is she here? She's not in the fellowship. Poof, she's here. Somebody tasted the lumbus bread and was, <laughs> was like Arwen. I wish it tastes like Arwen. <laughs> Peace. The quest must not fail in the quarrels of the fellowship. Each of you shall bear one half of the sword that was broken. This is dumb. I want the sharp part. <laughs> <laughs> I want the part with the hill. <laughs> Boromir and Aragorn bend the two sword halves to her. She kisses each blade on their keen edges. She looks up and there is blood on her lips. That's what you get. Gross. She goes first to Aragorn and kisses his mouth, Ew. then to Boromir and kisses his. Her blood is on their blades and on their mouths. All right, this is a this is that kinky thing. This that is you, how you get. That's AIDS. the thing you click last at the end of the night when you're like really bored. Yeah. First Aragorn time. and Boromir, I bind you in brotherhood with my blood. The two men bend their knees and kiss the thighs of her dress. They are both deeply moved. Boromir weeps openly and a tear starts out of Aragorn's gray eyes. They rise up and Boromir kisses Aragorn's mouth. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> when was this written? 1970. All right. Well, who plays Aragorn in the movie? Uh, Boromir Viggo, Viggo Morton. <gasps> they were gonna fucking kiss and shit. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Bean in that ass. Yeah. <laughs> they turn back to Arwen, but she is gone. Frodo watches in awe. Yeah. What the fuck, guys? <laughs> Whoa, did some chick just make us make out? <laughs> <laughs> but he probably can't see her. <laughs> yeah, so like, Why are they making out? Ooh, it's bloody. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> the embers glow. Humans is weird. <laughs> Boromir and Aragorn resume their watches, pacing the perimeter of the camp. Like nothing what the happened. Fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they definitely don't want nothing to be like, yeah, are you cool? Yeah, no, no. 
Yeah, that's cool, man. Mm, it's cool. Let me have my half of the sword back. <laughs> Wait, my sword or your sword? <laughs> Exterior. In view of the misty mountains. Day. The nine scramble up a steep, stony slope. The complaining hobbits are helped by Aragorn and Boromir. Over the ridge of the rocky hill, Aragorn, Boromir, and Gandalf appear. The tall ones. They are awed and daunted by what they see. Then, over the ridge comes Gimli. An expression of ecstasy erupts on his face. He tosses his axe into the air. Safety first. Come on. <laughs> In front of the Nine are the Misty Mountains, a chain of mighty peaks, snow-shrouded. Was I Gimli? You were. I thought it should have been him, because it's John Reese Myers. It's like, no one tosses a dwarf, but it was you. Okay. Well, you're so going to be it. Sam, too. Who's Sam? I think I'm Sam, oh, too. Word. Do you want to be one? I'll be Gimli. I don't really Sam's care. Sam's just got the one line. Let's just do it. Word. Oh, okay. Do Gimli. Redhorn! Karadhaz, the cruel! Cloudy head. Oh, the misty mountains. They stand tall in my dreams. Which of these is Mount Doom? I was expecting far in smoke. Mount Doom? It lies far beyond the misty mountains. Over the mountains? Is that the only way? No. There is another way. Beneath the mountains is great dwarf kingdom of once. <sighs> but now the doors are closed and lost. And the great hall's empty. Terrible things befell the dwarves, and they were driven out. Stop crying, Gimli, and collect that wood. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, and collect what wood you can. Exterior, high mountains, day. The nine trek up the mountains. The wind and the blizzard get progressively worse. The hobbits, exhausted and frozen, trudge on, dazed. Occasionally, one of the big people gives them a push. This weather is a trick of the enemy. Boromir and Aragorn. <laughs> <laughs> he's still he's still dazed by making bloody kisses with Aragorn. <laughs> that is a trick of the enemy. Right. <laughs> weather. He sounds like he just got a dispatch, but he's not a strong reader. <laughs> <laughs> this weather is a trick of the enemy. <laughs> I don't know what fucking because he's just oh no. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> the Mid Atlantic. This is the weather a trick of the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I am Boromir. My, <laughs> my language is nondescript. Boromir and Aragorn advance abreast, plowing powerfully through the snow, mm. pulling and dragging the four hobbits. <laughs> and behind Gandalf, Legolas and Gimli struggle to keep up. Exterior, glacier, day. The nine are trekking across a glacier. The wind howls and the snow swirls around them, driving over the surface of the ice. Mary slips dragging down the others. They lie on the ice, exhausted, incapable of going on. Gandalf stands up and rhetorically makes a grand gesture with his hand. Accursed Sauron, I command your winds. A blast of wind knocks his hand into his face. Defeating, he defeated, he stoops down. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah. <It> just, ah, ah. <laughs> Did, did they find this to be, like, really exciting seeming when they were writing in that room wallpapered with the book? It appears so, I've been bested. He commands, <laughs> he commands the wind, and then it blows his hand into his face. Who's got that l no agency over your hand <laughs> where it's like, ah! <laughs> uh, so, so we guess over in, in Mordor... Sauron's going, why are you hitting yourself? Yeah. Why are you hitting yourself? <laughs> I made the I made the two good looking ones make out and I made the old one slap herself. <laughs> it's been a good day. The depths of evil know no bounds. <laughs> He's like just an asshole jock at a high school. Like <laughs> fucking nerd. <I> tricked him. <laughs> Another gay. <laughs> Yo guys. I, s I forged one ring to rule all of you. <laughs> Suck on that, losers. <laughs> when really, I'm the one who rules. <laughs> that was the tournament ring, bro. <laughs> That's good. Fuck, what a good bit. Yeah, but he's Mick Jagger, remember? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Boromir and Aragorn have already gathered wood together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Making out, now they're gathering yeah. wood together. <laughs> Give me that wood. Oh, this one's attached. <laughs> Give me all your wood. Kindling for my fire. Gandalf extracts from his cloak a flask from which he sprinkles powder over the wood. He ignites the wood with tinder and flint. All huddle around the fire. The flames are tortured and flattened by the wind. The heat of the fire melts the ice of the glacier beneath and around it, and water flows away from the fire down the glacier, freezing again at a distance. Can, can he not, like, do cool magic? Okay, so... While it might seem more wizardy for him to just go like whoosh, right? He apparently carries a flask of gunpowder and a flint. Yeah, they're like, why don't, why not have the wizard create a fire? And he's like, <laughs> 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 he, he made, he made fireworks. Right? Why didn't he shoot one into the logs? <laughs> Look. He's not about that flashiness. He's not gonna yeah. make the Statue of Liberty disappear. He's gonna. Like, hire workmen to take the Statue of Liberty down. Piece by piece. Even, he couldn't even stop the wind. He couldn't even stop his own hand. <laughs> He's the worst fucking wizard I've ever seen. You <laughs> shall not pass. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm just going to... Oh, okay, oh, yeah. Oh, shit. I'll get out of your way, Excuse though. me, sir. Pardon me. <laughs> Instead of you shall not pass, he just puts up a, a do not enter sign. Yeah, please don't go. <laughs> I have a velvet rope. <laughs> uh, they're gathering firewood to get. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Suddenly, the moaning wind carries the howls of wild beasts. Wargs. 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 Draw your blades. Form a ring. Feed the fire. Wait, wargs? Oh, you mean yeah. that's. Isn't that what Bran is? He wargs into people to take over there. Oh, that's how they're connected. Depends on the uh, the flavor of fantasy. I in D and D a warg yes. a warg is like just a a smart wolf. I don't remember wargs in Lord of the Rings. Me neither. I gotta well, reread it though. It's they're been furry years. white mutants of men and animals. Wait, how do you know that? It says it right there. He's reading ahead. Damn it, Jeff. Well, we were speculating and we we're only We a talked half, about this, half a Jeff. Sentence down. Shut up, Boromir. <laughs> Go back to your Aragorn stroking. I'm working into him now, Chris. <laughs> they all form a tight circle around it and throw all the wood on the fire. <coughs> from out of the whirling snow, white creatures appear, rushing from all directions at the nine. The wargs are furry white mutants of men and animals, ferociously savage. Gimli, his stout legs apart, wields his axe. Legolas's bow sings. Arrows fly. Aragorn's and Boromir's arms are hardly visible <laughs> as they wield blades which cut into the flesh of the wargs. Wargs feast on their slain companions, but this does not stay their onslaught. Aragorn, Boromir, Gimli, and Legolas are retreating closer to the fire. Gandalf, staff and wood in hand, slays a warg, which leaps at the hobbits. Frodo fights with Sting, while the other hobbits, terrified, swing burning sticks. Wait, Sting the... No, that's his sword. That's his sword. Not okay, the wrestler. I thought, well, I thought it was the lead singer of the police. <laughs> it's like, I'm with the wargs! The, the wrestler slash the lead singer to the police. <laughs> yes, that's it's a much the same better, person. That's a way better version. I have a message in the box. <laughs> Suddenly, Gandalf rips off the hobbits's, the hobbit's cloaks, thrusting them into the fire. The cloaks, ooh, that's very short-sighted. Yeah. Oh, we, <laughs> let me keep the fire so that we don't freeze. <laughs> Quick, take your coat off and put it in the fire. Thrusting them into the fire, the cloaks burn, creating an enormous roaring blaze. The wargs jump back in fear. From the fire, a multicolored smoke billows up. The smoke seems made of flowers and leaves? Nice. It is whipped away by the blasts of wind. Gandalf has extracted a drinking flask from his cloak. He booms out at the hobbits. Drink this! He thrusts the... <laughs> I good. hope it's not the wrong flask. 
<laughs> like drinking gunpowder and getting wait, close I'm, to the wait, fire. Wait, I'm, I'm in this one. <clears throat> he thrusts the flasks into Sam's mouth, rips it away, and thrusts it into Pippin's. The hobbits pass around the flask, gulping down drafts. Immediately, they become tipsy and giggly. Immediately. It's like rape juice. It's, it's like, ah! Let's get them real drunk so they don't feel it when they get ripped apart They'll by wild animals. Better. He took their clothes and gave them roofies. What the shit. fuck is this shit? What a good fight. Gandalf's like, it works for all the women in the village. <laughs> Drink this. Oh my god. Now Gandalf brutally grabs the hobbits and lays them on the ice. Oh my god. <laughs> this is real rapey. Where the water is gushing away from under the fire and refreezing, Gandalf jumps to Frodo's side. He rotates his fingers on Frodo's eyeballs. What does that mean? I don't know. Then he jumps to Mary's side. Frodo's eyeballs continue to rotate. The rhythm of his breath slows down. This ain't reading well. What is? What is he? I don't somebody, know. Somebody try to explain just, to me what Let's just keep going. Think. Let's find out what happens because I'm really confused. Gandalf motions Legolas to lie down. He works on him, then yeah. Gimli, and then Boromir. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, get off the pimp. <laughs> Aragorn stands <laughs> over the body. <laughs> <laughs> the stand. wargs are his homies. Like, yeah. I got you where I want you now. I've been rotating this motherfucker's eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> wargs, quick! Everyone, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> it's the only way to survive. <laughs> uh, Aragorn stands over the bodies of his companions as Gandalf works on them and fights furiously to ward off the wargs. <laughs> then Gandalf pours onto the fire fistfuls of salts and powders. The fire blazes. The wargs retreat, blinded. Aragorn lies down, takes a sip of Gandalf's drink, and the wizard works on his eyes. Then Gandalf takes a swig, lies down himself, rotating his own eyes. What is this? What the fuck? The blaze of the fire subsides. Water gushes over the nine, freezing around them and over them. Their expressions are placid, if not silly. No, definitely silly. Mary's fat face is still out of the ice. He is giggling to himself. The warg you hear is worse than the orc that you fear. But where the warg bowls, howls, there's also the orc prowls. The companions are caught in helpless and infectious giggles as they drift into unconsciousness. The water flows over their faces, freezing them in... Oh god. Freezing them into the ice. Gandalf's face is the last to be covered. The tip of his long nose appears beneath the rising surface of the water. Don't worry, everybody. In 70 years, we'll all be Captain America. Just like I planned. The tip of his long nose disappears beneath the rising surface of the water. A warg leaps at it viciously. Its jaws smash against the ice. From under the ice... Gandalf sees fangs just an inch from his face. The wargs, teeming above the nine, furiously bite and paw at the ice. I showed them. I encased us in ice forever. <laughs> You'll never get us now. All you can do is look at us. <laughs> You'll be dead when scientists are excavating our corpses. <laughs> What the fuck? I don't like anything that just happened. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but I guess if your eyes are rotating, you don't die. What? What is? What is? Why? What? I don't know. Just do this. If you're ever freezing to death, just do this. Yeah, and you'll be okay. And giggle a little bit. <laughs> yeah, as long as you're drunk, you're fine. Uh, it's actually how I live my life, so. <laughs> yeah. Know, fuck off. <laughs> Oh, this looks pretty fucking life imperiling. I better get drunk. I better get drunk for this. Exterior, glacier, day and night. A panoramic view of the glacier, now dazzling under a crisp blue sky. The wargs are not in sight. Beneath the ice, deep down, the bodies of the nine are suspended inside the glacier. Night. 
Now the light of a crescent moon, revealed through patches of fast-moving clouds, shimmers darkly upon the glacier. The red glow of a rising sun shines through drifting snow and impregnates the glacier with a pink tint. Mouth of the glacier, day. Great blocks of ice break off. Wait, so that's his plan? Just like encase them in ice and wait for the sun to come out the next day to thaw them? Hopefully, knock wood. Without the wargs being around, they're just like, please go away. I'll use their impatience against them. What What if they thaw out and like the wargs have made a camp there? They're just waiting. Yeah, they're like, you know they gotta thaw out, right? Yeah, they didn't think this through. They're like, our cave is right there. <laughs> and now when they're like their faces are gonna be exposed first, so we'll just <laughs> get in there and eat their faces while they That's can't they use can't their move. arms and shit. Yeah, and then we'll leave them there for a while. We're going to have food all winter. <laughs> Exterior, mountain stream, day. Blocks of ice are carried down a fast-moving stream. The blocks of ice tumble in the spray, chipping and breaking. The course of the stream is slower now. The blocks of ice are melting. In some of the blocks, it is possible to see bodies. Oh, wait. So now they're being carried on a stream in individual blocks of ice? Is that what's... Is that what I'm reading? I can't read any of this, man. Like, I'm I'm trying to follow it, and my mind is just not... These guys were, like, on heavy drugs when they wrote this, right? Like, the, there has to be concept art that they were drawing up that's like, this is why it'll work, and it's just not fucking translating to this script No, whatsoever. this made sense to them in the moment, but they only remember, like, one line at a time, I think. You know right. how, like, when you're really stoned, you start talking, <laughs> and you get halfway through your sentence, and you can't remember where it started, and you just have to, like, keep putting one word after another and hope that you get a point across? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think that's what yeah. this yeah. script they're is. They're working the scene backwards. It's like, all right, they're going down the river and blocks of ice. How'd they get to the ice? Uh, uh, they were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> there was wolves. Hello. He put them there. It's like, well, yeah, but what about their eyes? Oh, he rotated their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, their eyes will freeze, right? Not, not, the not the elevator backwards. pitch has got to be great. <laughs> like, all right, so there's like, there's short people, but there's like tall people too. And they're, one of them has a ring, but like, it's a special ring. Okay. <laughs> it's the one. <laughs> it's like, okay, you read the book. You didn't read the book. Okay. Let me start. Let me. Okay. So there's a musical number. <laughs> you know what? I'll just sing the whole thing. <laughs> Moving on. How? How? The nine <laughs> bodies are floating and churning in the eddies, which seem to reanimate their limbs. Not yeah, true. Good, good, good. Oh, wait. Uh, no, I, I skipped one line. Further downstream, the bodies of the nine are thawing out of the remnants of the blocks of ice. The nine bodies are floating and churning in the eddies, which seem to reanimate their limbs. A grasping hand emerges from the water. Gandalf's. Gandalf staggers to his feet, dazed, straining for a breath. This is the worst escape plan I've ever seen for anything in any medium ever. <laughs> it's pretty bad. He begins to breathe in gasps. The frozen features of his face thaw. Boromir and Aragorn, <laughs> the frozen features of his face thaw. So, like, he's moving around, but his face is like... Mm. <laughs> Was his eyes rotating? Were all their eyes <laughs> rotating under the ice? Like, you know, that's unclear. So the, so the, the wargs are, like, looking at him. It's just nine dudes under the ice going... <laughs> and they're like, oh. Boromir and Aragorn stagger to their feet. After seconds of choking gasps, they regain clear consciousness. Moving uneasily, Gandalf, Aragorn, and Boromir grab the floating bodies of the hobbits and fish them out. Carrying the hobbits, they stagger towards the bank. Legolas and Gimli emerge from the water a little downstream, and they help each other to the bank. I want to say because it doesn't approach this, but I would love if there was a scene of just Boromir bending over going, What the fuck? <laughs> What's that? We should write our own version of this script. Just uh, <laughs> this particular, like Lord of the Rings style God script. God damn. 
The hobbits take to jumping around. Oh, wait. Uh, no, exterior by the stream. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Exterior by the stream. Day. The setting is truly idyllic, with trees, flowers, and grass. The weather is balmy. The season is a combination of spring and autumn, with spring flowers blooming and trees turning. The nine lie on the bank, loosening their muscles and joints, still unable to talk. The hobbits take to jumping around, at first spastically, then more loosely. They attempt to sing, but they can't move their mouths properly. Why are they attempting to sing? Like, we just escaped these animals. They're fucking hobbits. We were frozen to death, and now we're thawing. You know what? Guys, let's sing. Let's just... I mean, if anybody's got anything to sing about, it's this group. That's true. Finally, sounds begin to issue from their throats as they dance about, warming themselves up. Gandalf has hung up to dry his immense cloak on a branch of a tree, and he is busy wringing out the water. To go, because his cloak didn't get set on fucking fire. I'm going to set your cloak on fire and then freeze you. What could go wrong? Did you guys not bring cloaks? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. And those were elven cloaks that were supposed to be able to hide you from, from enemies, if you'll recall. So, oh, that's true. Yeah, no one can you. Oops, yeah, my bad. From a uh, uh, prying eyes or something. Yo, we should have probably used those to hide from the wargs instead of setting them on fire and then freezing you to death. He's just sabotaging this entire trip. <laughs> Gandalf the dick. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to pull off a mask. And, Surprise, I was Sauron the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Moves like Give Jack me that ring. Moves like Jagger. <laughs> <laughs> He also checks the many pockets inside the cloak and pulls out mysterious looking objects, hanging them on the tree to dry. What's a mysterious looking <laughs> object? Well, dicks are not a mystery to this group. So it's, not <laughs> it's not a dildo. Yeah. <laughs> Just some trinket. If you look at it and you don't know what it is, it's mysterious. You're the writer. Why can't you tell us what it right? is? Like, like, the writer can tell you what anything is. They're making it up. Dear prop master, just make some weird shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mysterious objects, please. I love okay. John. <laughs> <laughs> so formal. <laughs> <laughs> he looks a bit ruffled. The others are lying on the grass, basking in the sun, half undressed, their clothes and possessions spread out. Yeah, they This are. movie's one big orgy. Mysterious objects. Mary is drying out Lembus. Aragorn is picking through some leaves on the ground and stuffing them into his pipe. Boromir blows water out of his horn. Pippin is lying in a patch of sunlight, completely dressed, and steam rises from his clothes. The atmosphere is very relaxed. Sam offers to help Frodo undress. <laughs> what the fuck is all this homoeroticism? But Frodo is reluctant to expose the ring hanging on its chain. Sam looks up at the blue sky in which hangs a crescent moon. It's very strange. The moon's the same as when we were in Rivendell. It's out of its running. Or I'm all wrong in my reckoning. It hasn't been a month since we left Rivendell. Or has it? Or two months? Or three? Or a thousand and three? Or has time stood still? Nay, time does not tarry ever. But change and growth is not in all things and places alike. For the elves and the... This is Legolas, by the way. For the elves, the world moves both very swift and very slow. Swift, because they themselves change little, while all else fleets by. Slow because they do not count the running years, not for themselves. Yet beneath the sun all things must wear to an end at last. They all meditate on these words for some reason. Sam, during Legolas' speech, is examining the flowers which are both blossoming and going to seed. He looks up at the trees which are turning and shedding their leaves. Is it autumn or is it spring? Gandalf looks down. Wait, Gandalf looks down at, comma, them basking in the sun. Time has overtaken us, I fear. 
the mountains have refused us passage. No other resort is there but to pass through Moria. Aragorn flinches at the mention of Moria, but a light comes into Gimli's eyes. Moria! Table Reads will return after this brief word from our sponsors. What's up, Docs and Docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and if you like old cartoons and watching online reviewers dissect them, then you probably said the same thing I did about two years ago. Hey, what the fuck? Here, watch your language, you bud. Every Saturday morning, I do a brand new commentary of a Warner Brothers short. All throughout the month, I do video essays examining the history of these cartoons. Catch my videos on youtube.com slash Ferris Wheelhouse 2, or just use the hashtag Looney Tunes Critic. And now, here's Eric Bauza, the new voice of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> You've been listening to the Looney Tunes critic. Ain't he a stinker? Lights, camera, action. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Now, back to table reads. Okay, so, um, you know, I don't have a problem with homoeroticism in general. <clears throat> I just feel like, why does it need to be in this script? Like, it's not one of the tenets of Lord of the Rings is is that it's homoerotic. No one's like, oh, the homoerotic classic Lord of the Rings. Wh why is this happening? Man, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what any of that last scene was, but... The homoeroticism, normally it's it's funny because it stands out, but there's so much that I'm not even laughing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much, I'm not even laughing anymore. I just have a weird boner. <laughs> yeah. I'm just watching it, waiting for the next real love story. <laughs> I'm just waiting to jack off to this episode when it posts. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Take off more clothes. And that whole weird warg escape, like, that's not an escape. That's... Suicide. Oh, there's wolves coming! Quick, everyone get into suspended animation! <laughs> <laughs> well, that, we were, we we're, were going to Mars! <laughs> we were talking about the, uh, uh, during the break, we were talking about the, the connective tissue between the events that unfolded. Like, I get, okay, cool, maybe there's a wild scene. Where you're like, you know what? We're going to encapsulate ourselves in ice to put up a barrier. That'll be fun. I, I don't understand what they're getting drunk, burning the cloaks, rolling the eyeballs. I don't know what any of that was. And then that was just in a river. That was just trying different things until they settled <laughs> on the good plan, which was melt ice over yourself. <laughs> so Gandalf's plan goes, get naked. <laughs> <laughs> if failed, get drunk. <laughs> if failed, get dizzy. <laughs> if failed, encapsulate in ice and go into the land of it's tomorrow. Just throwing and everything and seeing what sticks. And I'm you know out of shit. <laughs> you know what stuck? Melting ice, getting inside, dying. <laughs> I'll not die to war because I've made a promise. I'll freeze to death first. I'll freeze to death first. <laughs> <laughs> Fade in. Exterior, steps and door to Moria, day. A slope covered in vegetation. Beneath is the mountain stream from which they have come. <laughs> in the midst of dense gorse and holly. Anybody know what gorse is? Uh, I know it's most commonly found next to holly. <laughs> <laughs> buying himself time to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> the nine, with their blades drawn, are searching amongst the bushes, hacking at them to better inspect the ground. It is a strange sight of thrashing blades and thrashing bushes. Threshing bushes, excuse me. Stranger than the last scene? Like, yeah, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like, at this point, some guys beating on some bushes with some swords... Not the weirdest thing we've seen. No, no, definitely not. I they, don't think it ranks. They went into the future. Yeah. The the river of time. And they're like, well, that's a weird fucking bush. <laughs> we got to get a good look at the ground. I don't Draw like your that. swords. This is strange. Slash them. <laughs> you know, 
we did sort of glaze over that whole thing. Frodo gets fro everybody gets frozen. They thaw out, and Frodo's like, guys, has it been like a thousand years? <laughs> like <laughs> that's true. What era is this? Are all my friends dead? Do you and think they're still Legolas looking is like, for us? Legolas last is like time passes quickly and slowly. At the same time, than yeah. normal. Doesn't matter to me. I'm a fucking elf, y'all. <laughs> y'all gonna die. I don't care. All my friends are immortal. <laughs> All your hobbit friends are probably dead, though. Yeah, yeah. No, they don't live long. For, hey, Proud hey, Sam. Feet. Hey, Sam. Rosie Cotton. Oh, she married some other dude and had a bunch of kids, and she's dead, and her kids are dead, and everybody's dead because we've been frozen for a long time. Wards, they're extinct now. <laughs> Jeff, you look stressed out. <laughs> I'm stressed out. I didn't know there was a lady named Rosie Cotton. <laughs> it's like, hey, you got any more Butterfinger? <laughs> I'm going to need a fucking break. <laughs> I don't know if they mentioned Rosie Cotton in this uh, script, but... I didn't see the name. I don't. I remember. know Holly Gores. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie Cotton is the, the, the girl that Sam ends up with, and they have a... Girl? Yeah. Come on. The, Come the, on. The Hobbit woman. <laughs> Come on. That Sam but ends Mr. up with Frodo. and marries, and they have a daughter named Elenor. None of these nine are ending up with a girl, my Mr. dude. Frodo. <laughs> not a one. Okay, not I'll these carry versions of these them. Versions of <laughs> my beard. I mean, my love. <laughs> All right. Uh, Gandalf making leverage on his staff pries open a clump of brambles. He finds what he is looking for, a flight of stone steps, long since overgrown. The nine ascend the flight of steps. The steps to the great door here, elves, and dwarves traded together in better days. It was not the fault of the dwarves that the friendship waned. I didn't hear anyone fucking talking about whose fault anything was. Why don't you shut the fuck up? Nah. You actually just in you actually just paraphrased your line. <laughs> no, did I? <laughs> I have not heard that it was the fault of the See? elves. <laughs> <laughs> you actually just paraphrased your whole line without looking at it. Gambler, you're a dick. I didn't fucking know. <laughs> Seriously though, like who what kind of, what a dick for real. Here elves and dwarves traded together in better days. Hey, it wasn't our fault they stopped. Bunch of nerd, nerd wait, elves. Wait, pre-time hop or like now? Post-time, <laughs> time bend. What decade is this? What is this? They bristle and glare at each other. Gandalf comes between them. I have heard both and will hear no more. The steps come to an abrupt end against a blank wall of rock into which weeds have sunk in their roots. There is no sign of a door. Mary is out of breath. Well, that was a long climb for nothing. They must have taken the door with them when they left. Gandalf runs his staff across the surface. A patina of dust falls off. On the surface of the stone, faint lines appear, like veins of silver. They form into a pattern. A design emerges. An axe, such as Gimli's, surmounted by seven rings. Beneath these are mounds of precious ores, each bearing a different phase of the moon, and a star with many rays. The emblems of the ancient kingdom of Moria. Boromir is searching for a crack or a, or a hinge, but in vain. Gandalf taps his staff along some hieroglyphics. What does it say? It says, sing, friend, and enter. All right, so in the book, it's speak, friend, and enter. But John Boromir is like, you know, if we change one word, we can get another musical number in this bitch. <laughs> yes! Gimli is also squinting at the runes. He looks at Gandalf admiringly. You speak the ancient dwarf tongue. Read it, not speak it. Meanwhile, Frodo is repeating the riddle to himself in various ways. Sing friend and enter. Oh, he's like putting the comma in different places like, friend! <laughs> friend! <laughs> Gandalf looks annoyed that Frodo has stumbled on the, on the answer. But of course, Mr. Frodo, 
You see the word friend and the magical dwarvish door shall open. Isn't that so, Gimli? Gimli, sing friend in your ancient tongue. My ancestors were driven from Moria. Uh, 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 Gimli shakes his head You're sadly. Gimli. My ancestors were driven <laughs> from Moria. Not that much. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> too much shaking. <laughs> Less shaking, more sad. <laughs> the ancient tongue is lost. Less Some... shaking, more sad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a real director, you guys. <laughs> Less shaking, more Less sad, shaking, you more son of a sad. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, elf. Tell me when I'm wrong. Oh, ho <laughs> ho hold on, Jeff. <laughs> Give it this is the best director award. <laughs> Less shaking, more sad. <laughs> oh, the music's playing us off. Sorry. Oh. Uh, Hello, my baby. I'm Hello, the Stanley my... Kubrick of stage direction. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, Gandalf expected that answer. All eyes are upon him, willing, waiting for his move. He senses this. He straightens up and casts aside his cloak dramatically. <sighs> A few trials will open it. <laughs> First... Everyone try throwing your cloak on the fire. <laughs> Let me drink this. We're not going to get friend, thrown. Friend, friend, friend. Friend, friend. He chants a succession of guttural words. Oh, he was doing next. <laughs> Blahaga. <laughs> Bligity. <laughs> There's only so many sounds a mouth can make, everybody. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. It's just metal boy. Because he casts his... Cape aside like an anime. He's like, Whoa. I've got better finger cards. <laughs> I'll bet you that the word for friend in ancient elf uh, dwarfish is flitterbill. <laughs> Wimble snatch. Shit. What if it's friend? <laughs> I mean, it could it could be like German, Just where everything's friend. sort of similar. Yeah. <laughs> Fran, Fran, Fran. Frund. Oh god, I got another boar mirror line coming up. Hold on, hold on. Let me try this. Let me try this. Friend and dwarfish. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you, the door open. <laughs> you got a friend and dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting sued. <laughs> uh, the door does not budge. Boromir laughs nervously. He begins aping Gandalf, mimicking his voice. The hobbits laugh. Boromir is carried away by his performance. Anger rises in Gandalf. If the great wizard cannot open the door, let's see if it will withstand the voice of Minas Tirith. He takes the horn and blows a blast upon it. With a battle cry, he hurls himself against the rock. He bounces off it, falling to his back, and lies there rubbing his shoulder. The hobbits roar with laughter. And Boromir joins in good-naturedly. The laughter peters out. Silence and a sense of unease falls upon them. Gandalf casts the blazing eyes of a terrifying wizard upon them. They look away, but his gaze catches and holds Gimli. Gandalf advances on Gimli, who retreats, terrified. Only Gimli has the memory to open the door. Then he booms out. You greedy dwarves! Gimli falls backwards as if the power of Gandalf's voice has knocked him to the ground. Gandalf grabs him and thrusts him into a spiky and dusty bush of gorse. Gimli is terrified, unable to talk. He slides to the ground and brandishes his axe. The others jump back in fear. Greedy dwarves just dig, dig, dig for precious metals! Dig, you greedy dwarf! Gimli begins cutting into the ground with his axe and chopping through rocks. Working with animal fury, he digs away, scooping out the earth. He burrows the ground like a mole. Greed, greed, greed! Dig deep! Delve into the depths of the earth, greedy dwarf! I'm sorry. Gimli is chopping the ground with an axe and saying, Greed, greed, greed! 
This is the next musical number. If you just put music over it, it makes greed, sense. Greed, 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 Whoa. greed, greed. Uh. <laughs> this is where we find out that John Boromir, or jo John Boromir. <laughs> John Boromir. <laughs> That's the second time you said that. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part where we find out that John Borman is anti-Semitic. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Work makes you free. <laughs> At which Gandalf strikes Gimli with his staff. He howls and digs even faster. Earth flies out of the hole. This is like some PTSD shit. Yeah. Gandalf swirls off his cloak and casts it onto Gimli, covering him. With his staff, he thrashes at the shape beneath the cloak. In the darkness, Gimli goes on digging frantically. And the greedy dwarves delved too deep into the bowels of the earth and stirred evil things. And from the abyss and the eternal darkness, monsters arose and drove out the dwarves from Moria. Under the darkness of the cloak, Gimli is frantically attempting to escape as he relives the ancestral memory Gandalf is recalling. And a terrible monster rose out of the depths. I don't know why he keeps... Like, we're already con condensing this gigantic story into one movie. And he keeps creating new shit to put in. Like there's not enough shit for you to cover already. Right. <laughs> what is this weird like Gimli hypnosis digging <laughs> bullshit? This is, fucking, this is uncomfortable. I've, I've, we've read a lot of shit here and I'm uncomfortable as shit. <laughs> thinking of how this would have been on screen. Beat him with a stick. But like Gandalf's supposed to be the hero. <laughs> there's well, no you know, heroes. There's no heroes here. This is how... He makes people think that he's a great wizard. He carries gunpowder, <laughs> and he just, like, beats people. He's a cult leader? <laughs> <laughs> well, like he's, like the nine Lincoln. is the beginning. He just gets people drunk and beats people with fucking mental issues. <laughs> Gandalf mixes some Kool-Aid. Oh, no. Oh, and you dug, didn't you, <laughs> you little bitch? What the fuck? This is all real fucked up. It's <clears throat> bad. Gandalf roars like a monster, as if he was play-acting to a child. Gimli, distraught with fear and panic, is trapped beneath Gandalf's cloak. He howls with despair, then mumbles in an ancient guttural tongue. Gandalf whips his cloak away and onto his back. Gimli rises to his feet, waist-deep in the hole. His eyes are filled with tears. He looks up to Gandalf, exhausted but grateful. Gandalf stretches out a hand and helps Gimli out. In his ancient tongue, he thanks Gandalf, kneeling at his feet, kissing his hands. Thank me not, Gimli, until I can thank you. Open the door to Moria. Thank you. Oh my god. This is some for throwing your cloak over me and hitting me with a stick and forcing me to dig with an axe while saying, greed, greed, greed. <laughs> Until I relive the trauma of being attacked by a monster. <laughs> Gimli has Stockholm Syndrome, right? Yeah, no, this is, abs this, Gandalf's a hero. He's summoning, he's summoning the, the, the negative memory in him, I guess. This is crazy. This is insanity. This yeah. script is insane. Gimli walks up to the door. For a moment, he is pensive. The others watch, still bewildered by what they have witnessed. Gimli stamps his feet and begins dancing. He repeats a word in his harsh, guttural chant, repeating it in different rhythms and tones. A real jaw cracker, all right, this dwarf tongue. Boromir lets out a yell and jumps into the air. And the mountain cracks open! On the rock face, the shape of a door appears, then hinges open. Boromir and Legolas and the excited hobbits rush to embrace Gimli. Legolas wipes the sweat from Gimli's brow. Gandalf sighs with relief. He is drained, and his step falters. Only Aragorn notices, and lends the old wizard his arm. Too soon on the journey, I have called up the very roots of my powers. I fear that when greater challenges come, I may be used up. Oh... It took all of my magic to beat that dwarf with a stick. 
<laughs> my flask is empty. <laughs> you bitches drank all my happy juice. <laughs> it's like you go to Vegas and is this your card? Yes, good job. Oh, God, I'm used up now. Oh, boy, it's time to call oh, the night. <laughs> I was going to saw that lady in half, but I, whew, I don't know if I can. <laughs> so everything I had to fucking ask the fates what your card was. He's such a shitty wizard. <laughs> the shitty wizard. <laughs> then he addresses them all. Gimli, I thank you. But let us not rejoice, for we enter a place once of glory, now of dread. Interior, entrance chamber, Moria, day. Gandalf is the last of the nine to step in. The doors close, enveloping the fellowship in blackness and a deathly quiet. Only Gandalf's staff glows as he crosses to lead the way. Their eyes act accustomed to the dark. They are in a large round chamber. At the far side of a tunnel leads off into deeper darkness. They become aware of a whispered sound. It is faint and distant, but is repeated in an endless echo. It seems to come towards them, and as it does so, gets louder with each repetition. Precious. 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 It passes and goes on circling the chamber, receding in a whisper again. Then the whole process is repeated as the word makes another circle, the whisper amplifying to a shout. The hobbits are fascinated. They follow the word round with their eyes. With their eyes? Look, that sound! Precious. <laughs> a memory stirs in Frodo. He whispers to Sam. Gollum says. The sentence is cut off by Gandalf's hand clamping over Frodo's mouth. But the words that did escape chase the other around the echo chamber, rising from a whisper rapidly to a shout. The two voices intermingle. Gollum says. Precious. Precious! Gollum says, Precious! Gandalf hurries them out of the chamber into the far tunnel. Interior, Moria, the underground kingdom of the dwarves. Day. Gandalf pauses. Gimli breaks out into enthusiastic exclamations in his lost tongue. Then he explains. Yes, yes, the chamber is a device of worn off of intruders. Ah, the dwarves of once... I'm sorry, Gandalf, but that voice... It was Gollum, and his voice is still fresh. So fresh. Gandalf looks about grimly and draws his sword before pressing on. Keep in file, you, Aragorn, take up the rear, and Gimli, help me find a way. They start to walk, strung out in a line. They stumble on, their footsteps echoing down the dark tunnel. No one is inclined to speak. Gimli mumbles to himself happily. The way turns and twists. Now and then, steps lead them downwards. Sometimes the path divides and Gandalf pauses to choose a way, occasionally consulting Gimli. The walls are wet, and over the carved stonework, stalagmites and stalactites have grown. The hobbits can barely see anything except the glow of Gandalf's staff, but Frodo notices that Gandalf holds up his sword in his other hand. The going becomes harder. The ground is strewn with boulders. Turning a corner. Turning a corner. Uh, Gandalf cries out a warning and steps abruptly. Stops abruptly. But Pippin, who is just behind, fails to stop and plunges into darkness. Gandalf grabs his foot and pulls him up. Pippin is trembling. I dropped my frying pan. I didn't hear her fall. Gimli looks down into the fissures. Probably still falling. A moment later, they hear a faint and distant sound of metal striking rock. Pippin shudders at the thought of it. The tunnel opens into a large space. 
Okay, that is written weird, right? Yep. The tunnel opens into a large space, Gandalf frowns. <laughs> <laughs> While the others rest for a moment, he searches for the perimeter and investigates the arches and tunnels which burrow away in all directions. Now we have many choices. But why, dear Gimli, did the dwarves want to live in these dark holes? No question mark. Holes? This is the great kingdom of City of Moria. Once it was not dark, but full of light and splendor. Gandalf has turned toward them, and Gimli, in his enthusiasm, seizes Gandalf's staff and hurls it high in the air. The staff spins up in a great arc, illuminating for a second or two a magnificent high vaulted roof suspended on great carved pillars that seem to grow out of the floor like muscles of tendons of stone. Muscles and tendons of stone. They gasp at its splendor. <gasps> they had no idea they were in such a place. Gandalf, unimpressed, catches the staff as it falls. More to the point, which of these passages will take us to the other side of the mountain? He resumes his explorations. The others follow him. Are there still piles of gold and jewels lying about? No, the orcs have plundered Moria after the dwarves were driven out. Gandalf moves from arch to arch along the perimeter of the vast hall. Gandalf thrusts his staff into the darkness and whips it so that it oscillates. <laughs> he mutters a spell and a great flash of light <laughs> springs from his staff. Lumos! For a split second, an underground city like a vast amphitheater is revealed. He looks through the next archway. Again, the flash of light. This time, a bottomless pit with cranes and pulleys jutting over the edge. See? Dwarves are not just moles scratching in dirty holes. Great, great, great. Great, great, great. <laughs> Hit him with a stick. Hit him with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf stops at a passageway. He considers it, his nose twitching. Ah, the air in here is less foul. This is our best chance. Come. Less corpses in here. <laughs> Smells like the way out. <laughs> Once more, they proceed in single file. The way ascends. An uneasiness percolates through the fellowship. Look, master, how Sting glows. Frodo draws Sting, his sword, which glows with a fierce blue light. So it does. That means orcs. Orcs! Panic. The news is passed along in... Baited, whispered breaths. Orcs, 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 orcs. All draw their weapons. The air has become stifling. They sweat and pant for breath. They move on stealthily over an undulating surface, which is soft beneath their feet. Are they walking on some fucking giant creature? I hope so. They're walking on more ice that has other people in it. Are they about <laughs> to get attacked by a Minoc? <laughs> maybe, maybe. They're not on an asteroid. Aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> what is Earth but one giant asteroid? Jeff, you're an asteroid. Yeah. A percussive beat breaks the silence. Then it is answered by another. Then no another. Gandalf calls a halt, listening, perplexed. Kanye busts around the corner. He lifts his staff and taps it on the ground. The ground responds with a strong, drum-like beat, and then another. Gandalf stops to examine the ground. What he sees horrifies him. The staff is tapping on the chest of an inert orc, which suddenly stirs, its heart pulsating and resounding. Oh, my ass. They've just been walking on bodies and shit like that. R. Kelly. What the fuck? Whatever. Run! It's our orcs. Run! Like, that's, this is stupid. <laughs> Yeah, the ground is it's, it's, just is living, just carpeted things. with, with a whole bunch of orcs. Oh my god, that's fucking dumb. I mean, it's slightly better than like a giant one giant monster that they're walking on, because at least is you it? haven't seen it a million times. They're sleepy bad guys. Yeah, but the the reason so the reason that it's always one giant monster is that that's believable, not 
a hundred people, dudes just laying on the ground, and they're like, "Whoa, this place is wild." You know, you know, Jeff. Um, <laughs> you're right. I, <laughs> I <have> no argument. <laughs> It's fucking dumb as hell. That's how I feel, you know, like one day a week, I feel like I'm inert. I just kind of lay on the couch like that. I mean, if somebody came in and started, like, playing a dope beat. Like, <laughs> well, it's like it's like putting the fucking light switch near the floor so you can flip it up with your foot. It's like, oh, everybody cuts them off with their hands. <laughs> That's boring. He swings his staff, and it throws off a vivid swath of light. They see that the rough ground around them is covered with inert orcs. Boromir steps back. Okay, look. Here's what you do. Okay. You just walk through like this. Stab yeah, him. you just, uh, <laughs> just stab, 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 stab. Just fucking skiing through with swords. Greed, 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 greed. <laughs> Digging holes in bitches. <laughs> organs flying just everywhere it's just a fucking mess just a vitriol party uh, Boromir steps back aghast his foot treads into the chest of an inert orc it heaves its heart begins to beat with a loud drum like thump it stirs orcs are human like creatures with <laughs> reptile and bird like features a kind of armor grows spontaneously from their bodies. That sounds like Dr. Seuss. Yeah. Orcs are human-like creatures with reptile and bird-like features. Could you, would you, in a cave? The companions run and scramble over the inert bodies. <laughs> oh, sorry. But they're dead. <laughs> Not dead. A blow will revive their filthy lives. What the fuck? <laughs> run! Or... Uh, what or, the or fuck? Or just, softly. just... Yeah. Like... You got this far. Mm. It wasn't until you started tapping him with your staff yeah. like a dumbass. Mm. Looks like poking them will wake them up. <laughs> <laughs> up. Run so that your feet hit yeah. them as hard as possible. Quick, stomp hard. <laughs> Throw these pebbles at all of them. Wake them up and leave. The orc which Gandalf struck with his staff is staggering to his feet, <laughs> beating his chest viciously. His heartbeat resounds clearly. It gains energy. He kicks another orc in the chest, who also stirs and then beats his chest in turn to get to get his heart going. As G oh boy. hold on, I gotta get my heart going. Ah, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> As Gandalf and the others run, their feet kick into and tread on the chests of other orcs. They come to life, beat their chests, and kick their companions. The place is resounding with clusters of percussion-like sounds, now revealed as the beating or orc hearts. It says or not of. <laughs> the awakening of the orcs gains momentum. They pursue the fellowship. Some orcs rise up in their midst, blocking their way. Gandalf and Aragorn smite them down before they gain full powers. The orcs gather in number. The fellowship is in full flight. Pursued now by the spears and clubs of the orcs. Ahead in the tunnel, a glimmer of daylight. Legolas points toward it. Hope sends a messenger to our black hour. Oh, man. That's some terrible dialogue. Yes, yes. He's so flowery. I don't know what to say Like in this. I don't know what... Never mind. I feel like they would have saw some of these fucking orcs when he was flashing his staff. Or when the thing they would have saw him, he would have saw him. The thing like, lit up, and he's like, "Oh, yeah." They're like, "Poof!" An amphitheater. Oh, thousands of fucking orcs laying on the ground with staffs and Why shit. Why can't like, I walk straight? Yeah, no, that's no, doesn't make it. The ground sure is squishy in this <laughs> cave under the mountain. I'm just saying, like, that's normal, right? <laughs> like skin is shifty and shit. You couldn't you walk on somebody and not know you're walking on somebody. No. no. Especially if you're walking on stone before that. Yeah, like you'd be like immediately look down like, oh my god. I mean, if you're in a bouncy fun house, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you're the worst fucking wizard. <laughs> <laughs> he is, though. He really is. <laughs> he is, yeah, though. <laughs> he's not a, not a good wizard. It's like, like, take Dumbledore, right? But. Dumbledore. Make, make it so he is just a straight moron. 
with no powers. Yeah. <laughs> wizard by name and nothing else. <laughs> I am a wi- He's a wizard like the guy that screams at you at 7-Eleven in the middle of the night. Like, <laughs> I'm a wizard! <laughs> what, what 7-Eleven are you going to, man? You should here, probably go to a different neighborhood. The best one. <laughs> the one at the end of your driveway. Yeah, yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a 7-Eleven. That's a shell. Oh, yeah, okay. It's shell of its former self. Okay, moving on from that. <laughs> the orcs are held back by Gimli, whose range has added enormous strength to his prowess. How? I don't know. He conducts a one-man massacre scything down orcs as they arise. As he strikes, Gimli calls out war cries in his harsh guttural tongue that he just remembered recently from it's being all, beat it's with all a creed, stick. It's all Creed lyrics. <laughs> the hobbits fight by his side, darting in and out, hacking at the scaly shins of the orcs. <laughs> It actually works if you do the creep. Yeah. yeah. When you are with me. <laughs> just swing at that. An, an orc rises just beneath Frodo's feet. Frodo deflects the orc's blade, which scrapes his side, and he is thrust back onto a dormant orc. The orc beneath him stirs, and Frodo is thrust upwards. The orc assailing Frodo is impaled on Sting and falls onto him. Frodo is between an orc which is reviving and a dead orc frodo sandwich boromir sees frodo and pulls him out but the dead orc has grasped frodo's wrist in a death lock okay. the dead one not the living room the, the dead one? one is the one that has him <sighs> boromir cannot break the orc away oh I accidentally turned two pages at once somehow. He's going through this so bad. <laughs> Stop the pain. Uh, the end. Poor Mir- <laughs> <laughs> Poor Mir cannot break the orc away, so he hacks off the hand. Frodo runs off, the hand hanging from his wrist. Aragorn, wielding his sword, defends them. All flee except Gimli, who will not give ground. Gimli, I command you, fall back. Reluctantly, he does so. The way out of the mountain is clear now. There is more light, and ahead, a narrow bridge of rotting rope and wood spans a chasm of some twenty feet across. The chasm glows dimly with firelight. Quick, over the bridge, fly. As Frodo runs, he tugs at the orc hand still grasping his wrist. They are fleeing for the bridge, when out of the chasm rises a terrifying sight. A huge creature wreathed in flame, whose soft body changes in shape, moves toward them, barring their way to the bridge. Its presence makes a strange humming sound. The Balrog, the bane of greedy dwarves. The orcs scream and cover their eyes, holding back as the creature rises up. The hobbits are struck with horror. Gandalf throws an anguished look in their direction. Cross while you can! But the Balrog has a paralyzing effect. The companions feel their wills sap. Their limbs grow heavy. They can scarcely move. Frodo feels for the ring and holds it. He has a powerful desire to put it on. Gandalf sees what he is doing and strikes Frodo's hand with his staff. The companions desperately try to reach the bridge with strange, slow movements, but it is as, it is as if they are climbing an impossibly steep hill, for they slide and slip back. A yellow, dazzling glow emanates from the creature and fills the cavern. Gandalf confronts the Balrog with staff and sword. You cannot pass! The Balrog's fire and sound fade for a moment. The companions feel the spell weaken. Aragorn recovers himself. Across the bridge! With the flat of his sword, he drives the sleepwalking hobbits toward the bridge. Boromir's eyes are fixed on the Balrog. Gimli and Legolas drag him to the bridge. It was gut- It has gutted and filleted me. Oh, Gondor, forgive me. Oh, fuck. 
Uh, I have died. <laughs> <laughs> I am dead. <laughs> that thing fucked me up. <laughs> <laughs> they manage to clamber up to the swaying bridge, but the Balrog grows in power again, swelling out, its light reviving. It moves toward the bridge, and the companions are once again drained of will and strength. Only Gandalf stands between them. He utters a great cry and strikes the Balrog with his staff. Bonk. <laughs> Greed. <laughs> <laughs> Greedy Balrog. <laughs> the staff incinerates and Gandalf plunges his sword into the belly of fire. The creature closes around Gandalf, engulfing him. But the force of Gandalf's attack drives it back and it crashes through the bridge into the abyss. The bridge is torn apart. Gandalf and the Balrog spin down into the fiery deeps, clutched in mortal combat. Mortal combat! <laughs> the Lost. broken rope bridge hangs precariously into the chasm. The Fellowship cling to it as best they can. Aragorn and Legolas drag themselves to safety and start to haul up the others. Frodo makes no attempt to help himself, but hangs to a rope, looking down at the ever-diminishing form of Gandalf and the Balrog. At last, they disappear from sight. And suddenly, flames leap up from the growing, glowing chasm. The fire changes in color to a deep blue. Meanwhile, the orcs resume their attack. As soon as they see the Balrog fall, in their frenzied desperation to reach the helpless companions, as they struggle with the collapsing bridge, the orcs try to leap the chasm. None can achieve it, and many plunge into the flames. Some even use each other as stepping stones, leaping on the back of one who has already jumped out. Swords and rocks, however, do cross the gap, and the Fellowship is forced back. Frodo cannot tear his eyes away from the pit, but the others lead him out, and they retreat toward the light with dismay in their hearts. Fade out. This script is bad. It's real bad. So, <clears throat> I want to congratulate you two. I feel like y'all are pre-reading this. I read the email that we're not supposed to pre-read this. But not only did you give me two characters that died, they died at once together. I got to read their death dialogue back to back. <laughs> this is like a <laughs> new a, a new thing. <laughs> I got two characters that die at once. Double dead. Wait. Is, is Boromir dead, or is was he just being maudlin? It didn't describe him dying. Yeah, I think he was, like, talking about, like, oh, wait, never mind. There his he is. spirit. Yeah. Oh, I thought, that, I thought that was his, like, death gurgle. <laughs> He's like, I've been gutted and played. <laughs> oh, forgive me. I mean, I probably would have <laughs> thought the same thing if I weren't more familiar with the story, yeah. and I know when he does die oh, okay. and how. Yeah, I, I was confused by that, too. I mean, I know when he's supposed to die, but he's like, oh, maybe. He was just being dramatic. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Gandalf dying. He's like, oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, guys. Hey. Hi. Oh, let's. I'm a guy. Turn that off. Okay, there we go. Um, Josh. Sir. Where can people find you on the internet? Oh man, you can find me on the internet at joshuajbaker.com. You can email me at me at joshuajbaker.com. Did you just read that off the screen as if you didn't know your own email well, address? Well, I was like, it popped up and I was like, I was imagining it, but then it was easier to just read it off the screen. So yeah. Hey guys, I see you on the screen. I see. It's right there. Yeah. Holler at me though. Um, Table reads is now on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash table reads. You can also find us on Twitter at the table reads on Instagram at the table reads and on facebook.com slash table reads. Um, like subscribe, do all those things. If you are a patron, you are listening to this on or watching us do this live on YouTube. Uh, way back on November 21st is when we're recording this. And this isn't posting until, like, fuck knows when. It's like, unknowable. 
Christmas Eve, I think, is when this is posting. Oh, Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Yeah, it's uh, sometime around Christmas this episode's posting. Maybe even sometime around New Year's. I don't have my calendar in front of me, but way fucking early, guys. Like a month early, you get to watch us do this on the video. Um, also, you can you can hit us uh, on YouTube. Um, Smash that if, like button. If you want to watch these not live, whatever, it's all there. Yeah, hit that bell. Subscribe to us there. Subscribe everywhere. I'm telling you too much. We should just go. Um, we'll see you next week for part five, four, part like four, four of Lord of the Rings. 56. <laughs> um, and, you know, until then... We'll miss you. This podcast was created by Sean McBee. For more, visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Cut to black. Black.